Hi. Yes, I am Stephanie May, and through the course of this uh, presentation, um, there's some personal details in here that I think will explain a bit more about who I am and that are um, core to the framework that I'm presenting, so I'll just leave it at my name for now. Um, thank you. Uh, so originally, when I proposed this talk, I thought that I would um, present it with a greater deal of formalism and really present a, a framework that allowed me to approach the, the questions that were really eating at me at the time within cartography, which is kind of, uh, how do I approach all the things that I want to do, all the personal projects that I want to do in cartography um, in a way that's going to inform all the ways in which all the tools that are out there are inadequate, even though I haven't even begun to explore all the, the tools that are out there and they're keeping new ones all the time. Uh, so um, it's a, bit, a little ambitious, maybe a little naive, but seems like a plausible research question, right? <laughs> well, what I found um, as I started um, you thinking more about this question and um, sort of light level skimming and, and remembering back to all of the cartographic literature and geographic let literature that I've, I've um, read over time, um, I, I found that um, the, the frameworks that I knew of were all pretty inadequate, right? They break down, um, broadly speaking, all the academics in the room should forgive me for this, but they, they break down into uh, uh, approaching things in one of two, two ways. There's the, um, the quasi-empirical approaches that are very much about ontologies and epistemologies and describing the things and, and, and describing what's out there. Um, that, oops, sorry, I got out of sync with myself. Um, and there are the critical approaches that tell us what we should think about the work that we're doing. For example, in the case of cartography, there are great books that I haven't finished about um, how maps are power and have been the tools of kings and are now the tools of surveillance and government in um, a, you know, a, a multitude of new scary ways. Um, the problem, with all of this is that it doesn't quite get, help me get to um, what I really, what I really wanted to understand within this field, which is much more on the level of personal and ephemeral and abstract. It doesn't tell me on a day-to-day -day way, like how should I exist as a cartographer and how should my everyday experience of using maps inform the work that I do. Um, so, uh, for example, um, what I really am much more interested in thinking about and much more interested in having inf inform um, how I think about cartography generally is um, uh, what are the cartographic processes whereby you give your friends directions in this day and age? Um, and um, w how do you personalize the app on your phone? And um, how do you use maps to organize a task or prepare for a trip or deeply understand your surroundings? Um, I did find a conference talk from 2003. Um, Professor Li Kui Ming uh, uh, published this in the Proceedings of the 21st International Cartographic Conference. Um, and it's, it's quite a, a nice screed that um, kind of does a great job of framing the problem that I think is all sort of um, lurking beneath the surface of all of our conversations at this conference a lot of the time, which is that this field is advancing so fast that although we want to be out ahead of it and want to be um, really kind of um, d defining the direction of the tools, most of the time we're chasing after them in order to catch up. Um, so she says, um, the boundary between map making and map use has been increasingly blurred since the introduction of interactivity into the cartographic process. And I think that that's true and important and for me really is, is how, why these things are connected, why it's an important question to consider how we as cartographers use maps informally in our, in our everyday lives. Um, 
she goes on to say in that same article that the development of cartographic theories and method methods lags far behind the technical evolutions. Instead of following the motto, today's theory is the key for tomorrow's practice, today more and more technique-oriented and cartographic products have become more and more functional. A majority of cartographic processes simply aim, aim at making things work by providing default solutions. She goes on to outline what she calls, um, well, she refers in generally to the cartographic process as one that has historically and continues to be purpose-driven, but what she posits is that it inevitably falls short of, of, of measuring the requirements of user-centered design. Um, I didn't really get the sense that she had any solutions, nor did I, but she had some zinger one-liners. Um, like technical possibilities and digital cartography seem to el have elaborately compensated for the inherent constraints embedded in, embedded in our traditional Mac making processes, which it, uh, is a really eloquent way of saying, of, of explaining why uh, so many of the map products that we see out there are just, you know, a bunch, like an interface where you can just turn it on and off a bunch of layers, just making up for, you know, our inability to really encapsulate what the user, uh, any knowledge about what the user ultimately is going to want to do by just giving them tons of options. And I think that this is often true when we look at the field of tools that we have available. And well, we look at the products of those tools, right? Either they're so customized um, that they're beautiful and great for their intended use, they're a great visualization of something, and they're in incredible, and there's many, many, many examples of that out there on the internet today, but that in a way makes them more ephemeral and, and, and often less useful, or else they are um, very utilitarian and very kludgy and probably could be better if we'd understood from the start how people were, the, the, flexibility with which people were going to use them. All right, so back to my progress. I'm searching through my hard drive, looking at all my half-finished projects. Where I'm constantly trying to like find little shortcuts for adapting things. This is just a little experiment I did to see how far I could get just on my phone with like using the copy-paste and, and other things just on the phone to edit a, a, a wayfinding map. Um, and the only real conceptual framework in everything that, that I've read that really, um, I think, encapsulates um, how I want to think about this is um, the existentialism, uh, <laughs> which uh, many people just associate with existential crises, but for me, existentialism um, is, you know, it arose in Europe amidst the cultural ruins, ruins and and um, rubble of World War II, and it's an intellectual movement that's centered on the question of questions of free cho choice and morality in, um, when society and governance is, is desperately limited and flawed. Um, and some of you may remember the, the movie I Heart Hugbees, which came out not long after uh, Professor Mang spoke in Durban, Mang spoke in, Durban um, in which uh, Lily Tomlin and Dustin Hoffman play existential detectives, oh, this is not, there you go. <laughs> um, characters of existentialist thought, um, uh, and, and they express a lot of, of, they sort of caricature it, um, but they, they express a lot of, of things in, in the way that existentialists tend to, which is passionately ambivalent, self-contradictory, non-linear, um, and yet somehow relatable. Um, Camus, who disavowed any real, any association with existentialism, did not believe himself to be existentialist, um, has often been, never been credited with being one of the more coherent um, uh, existentialists within the literary movement. And, um, you know, he wrote an essay, an essay called The Myth of Sisyphus, which concludes, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. And um, this, for me, is something that I think of on every practical cartography day. Um, as we go through the incredible range of things that our peer, peers and colleagues have done, which are beautiful and amazing, and learn and, and, and all of the tools that wash over our heads and all of the ambitions that we plan to undertake in the coming year, and uh, 
go home full of, full of uh, inspiration and, and tweet about how excited we are um, and then come back here again and do the whole thing over again. One must imagine that we are happy. And we are. <laughs> Except when sometimes we're frustrated. <laughs> um, uh, so, not, last week, Andy Woodruff put on his sparkly, t um, uh, sparkly uh, gold top hat and stole my thunder by saying, um, essentially, what I, what I feel about um, my career generally in web cartography. Uh, right, that web mapping is 50% making buttons and sliders, 25% setting up servers, 24% uh, just cramming interactive graphics into, a, into a, some sort of printable layup, and then 1% one, one cartography, I guess. Um, and so now I'll finally wind around and say a little bit more, like just contextualize myself a little bit and where I fit into all of this. Um, so I, uh, in February I left a, a job working for a big tech company. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I learned a ton, a ton of things that I would not have expected I would have learned. Um, uh, when I started on the cartography team, I had the privilege of being able to part, be part of a, a, a really cool launch of a transit product, product that was very heavily cartographic. At the end of the te tenure, my tenure, I got to be part of the launch of a really cool dark map. Um, and these um, achievements were amazing, but um, the thing about working in a big company like that is that you, authorship means a really different thing. And I, you know, I, I felt lucky to be a part of those things, but I was just a cog in a wheel, and, and part of, you know, there were a million contingencies, and, and many, and it felt good to support um, the work of cartographers more talented than I, and I was really uh, pleased to learn a lot about um, collaboration and how to get things done in large organizations, or in some cases, how to not get things done. Um, I think that this Dilbert cartoon may speak to the uh, professional experience of many of you. It's certainly not limited to um, big companies. Um, you small-scale mappers have had, you know, if you're any, any, anyone who's ever made a map for a client has had this um, experience of now our product is worthless hodgepodge of complexity and I appreciate your input. I couldn't have failed without you. Teamwork! Um, this is, this, this is, can be the, the negative downside. Um, I continue to consult and work um, in the tech se sector, and I have to say that I, I love it. I love the complexity of it, and I love trying to fit into these engineering um, constructs, but some of the things that we do as cartographers are absurd. Um, we're often asked to map a uh, map, map, match a map from platform A. Let's say it was made, let's say it was a raster map, and now there needs to be a vector version on platform B, or let's say it was made in Mapbox Studio, and now we want it in Tangram. It needs to look exactly the same, but with different data on a different platform. <laughs> uh, another absurd request that happens in the tech sector all the time, use Git to track changes in a style JSON or a YAML file. I don't know if you've ever you tried to use Git, like just source control management on a JSON. <laughs> it sucks. Um, uh, another really great one is prototype your redesign in this Docker container. I don't know, has anyone ever done that? Woo! All right. Um, and you know, you get these um, very naive questions like, well, how long would it take you to create a dark mode? Um, from people who don't quite can't quite envision or imagine the complexity of um, creating a, a, a wholesale cartographic product. Uh, Yes, yeah, so working in tech, um, any internet service, services company is going to involve a huge uh, in, uh, engineering stack that is in, in enormously complex, and it's an exercise in being fle flexible and humble, and an exercise in trying to kind of get your fingers into enough parts of the stack to be able to make a difference in the ultimate final cartographic product. And I love it, um, uh, and keep doing it, because I love it. Um, but I also think a lot about existentialism and, um, and uh, the ultimate ult um, existentialist challenge, which is that um, given the, the world and its flaws, um, all we really can and do, can and should fall back on is um, 
our own authenticity, which demands of us a lot of introspection and a lot of acknowledgement of our own limitations. Um, I enjoyed um, this tweet immensely, um, which Mila put out a, a, a couple of, yesterday, was it only yesterday? And then he answered this question for himself by saying, uh, that by, by summing up the responses he got, which ba basically, so the, the tweet is, um, are we using base maps for our online maps because we want to or because the mapping libraries have them enabled by default? Um, and the answer that he gave in his talk earlier today based on the tweets he received is, uh, yes, we want to <laughs> use them for context because that gives us a shortcut for something we really need to do but often the ways in which we use them end up being uh, just uh, sort of good enough. So my launch into the field of um, interactive cartography was enabled by um, tile mill, which may, many of I think you know many many of us remember quite fondly. Um, I think the gen there there previously there were a lot of cartographers who were quite attached to Adobe Flash, and what both of these tools allowed us to do was to almost completely control uh, the generation of uh, you know the generation of the final product um, from soup to nuts and port our own data style it in a very uh, uh, concise way, and that felt really good. Um, but you know, now that we must rely on technologies that are less, less completely encapsulate the final product that we produce, um, I, I submit that this existentialist reality is um, much more help, helpful um, and uh, that it's good to have peers and fellow travelers as we uh, let our conscience be our guide. Um, so, I, after leaving Apple, I moved up here to Washington. I bought 12 acres um, and started introspecting a lot um, about uh, um, my role at the center of the universe. Um, this is the mural in the town square where I bought my house. Um, this is what it says on the mailbox. So it's been a pretty good place for navel gazing. Um, slash, you know. Well, <laughs> um, so I only have a few minutes left, um, and I'm going to very quickly just go into a couple of vignettes of how I have tried to reconnect with my cartographic core and utterly failed, and I encourage you all uh, to come up to me and tell you, me your own stories of how you continue to fail as cartographers. Um, uh, or just tell me, tell me this also, um, what do you have uh, favorited or bookmarked on your phone? that uh, you don't remember why. I, for instance, have the Longshoreman's Hall and the Hearst Parking Center uh, in San Francisco. I, I've had these bookmarks for years. I have no idea why uh, I am using that functionality in that way. Um, all right, so. Um, one last, I'm sorry, before I get to the, the, I might not even get to that part where I tell you about all my failures. I just, I have to go on this one other little rant about existentialism and, and, and being a cartographer, which is um, that experience you have of being high, high, high in the air and the only map available to you <laughs> <laughs> is so bad <laughs> that it hurts you. And I asked, a, I asked a friend who was, who was in the know, I once got this explanation that the reason why is because, um, why maps on airplanes is so bad is because there's one media provider, they have a budget, they put in a bid, the low bid wins, it's, it's the, the, the package that they're advertising is, you know, movies and TV shows, um, and so, you know, it's kind of an add-on that they're going to create a map. So they have no budget for it, so they, they put these things together that are just inexplicably terrible but sometimes, but also extremely variable in what they offer. I actually kind of liked this one that showed the weather uh, and nothing else. Um. <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, so um, my, first, I, I, my first experiment in, in being a, a cartographer in real life after leaving my tech job was to start mapping my property. Uh, this is, um, 
this is a parcel map. Um, I saw that the um, GIS coordinator for Skagit County uh, was here. I don't know if he's in the audience now, um, but uh, uh, my, my parcel is actually, it's very hard to pull out. It's two parcels, but it's, see this crazy shaped one? And the, and the one sitting on top of it? Yeah, that, so that's us. Um, and I started, the, you know, the crazy exercise of um, reconnecting with um, all of the different, uh, trying to, I, I started the crazy exercise of, of navigating through um, how one acquires NAEP imagery in this day and age and how one acquires um, DEMs in this day and age five years after I had done it much. And all of you print cartographers who come up to me and say that you're not technical, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> it's really hard. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, all sorts of interesting, uh, hacky, surveying techniques, um, and this is as far as I've gotten so far, uh, a year after owning the property. Uh, so I got some contour lines, and that's a drone, that's a, some drone imagery. Um, so, uh, that's one project I failed at. Um, I'm out of time. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to just kind of say, there's more projects I failed at, but this is, um, one where um, I spent so long trying to make the apartment search map for, uh, t for use in Seattle that my boyfriend took over and uh, made one for me, uh, <laughs> which I really appreciate um, in, in, uh, in the Google My Maps functionality. But it also did highlight, and we'll get there, we'll get there. Aww. Yeah, there we go. Um, so, so I don't know if you guys, did you even know this was here in Google Maps? Um, you can make these maps in Google Maps. I didn't even know this. And you can do all these annotations. You can do actually an absurd number of annotations. They just don't work very well when you do a lot of them because it's not actually what this tool is meant for. But you can actually make a really serviceable map of the areas that you're interested in and the things that are important to you when you're exploring a new place where you want to live. Uh, I will leave it there um, and hope that um, if I don't have time for questions, you'll all come up and tell me your existential cartography experiences uh, when you see me in the halls. Thank you so much. <laughs>